Think you know your favorite comedies? Think again. These are the funniest moments that ever ended up on a cutting room floor. Adam McKay directed and co-wrote the 2008 comedy film Step Brothers, which has gone on to find a place among the funniest movies of all time. The plot follows two middle-aged men, Brennan and Dale, who still live at home with their parents. The pair are forced to live together and mature as adults when their mother and father begin dating and eventually marry. Step Brothers' best deleted scene was intended to come late in the movie, just before Brennan's ultimate redemption. Featuring the always hilarious Rob Riggle as Randy, the scene demonstrates the bullying Brennan has to put up with at Derek's helicopter leasing firm, where he now works. You wake up in the middle of the night, someone's laying next to you, spooning with you, chances are it's going to be me. I hope that doesn't happen. Despite having some great lines, it is understandable why it was cut, given that Step Brothers already contains a similar sequence that is far more essential to the plot. In many ways, 1995's Tommy Boy features comedian and actor Chris Farley at his very best. Directed by Peter Sagal, the movie sees Farley portray the dim-witted but friendly Thomas Callahan III, who takes over the family business after the sudden death of his father. Teaming up with the anxious and contemptuous Richard, his father's former assistant, Tommy travels across the US to find new clients to keep the company in business. The SNL alumnus was easily one of the funniest people on the planet when he took the lead role in Tommy Boy, and he is undoubtedly best remembered for the perfectly timed pratfalls that made up so much of his physical comedy. Tommy Boy already contains several several great examples of this, but one deleted scene in which he runs across a parking lot makes a perfect demonstration of his comic talent. What do you get when you throw two of the world's best comedic actors together and add a little golf for flavor? Hint, the answer certainly isn't Happy Gilmore. Chevy Chase and Bill Murray had a notable spat in the late 1970s when Chase returned to Saturday Night Live, an affair that ultimately ended up in the pair coming to blows on the show's set. By 1980, however, the pair had reconciled enough to work together on Caddyshack, a comedy masterpiece that follows a young caddy who becomes embroiled in a feud at the prestigious golf club where he works. Unfortunately, Chase and Murray don't interact with each other much throughout the film. But what does exist is pretty much gold. Need proof? Take a look at this deleted scene, in which the bizarre groundskeeper attempts to give Chase's character some tips on improving his golf skills. See, I'm easy now, and I'm back real slow. See? Well, that's, I think that's going to be pretty long. It seems like Will Ferrell could hardly put a foot wrong when it came to comedies in the 2000s. He starred in all kinds of smash hits, from Blades of Glory to Elf to Anchorman and more. Arriving smack bang in the middle of his most successful period was Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, a sports comedy that sees Ferrell portraying NASCAR racing driver Ricky Bobby alongside his teammate, who is played by John C. Riley. Talladega Nights proved a financial and critical success, thanks in no small part to some outstanding comic moments from Ferrell. One deleted scene sees the down-on-his-luck driver attempting to rebuild his life and find something new to do. At least that's what he tries to convince his mother. Son, you've done many things in your life to make me proud. Farting in a complete sentence isn't one of them. Judd Apatow has been responsible for some of the best comedies of the last two decades. The director and writer was a creative force behind the likes of The 40-Year-Old Virgin, Knocked Up, and Trainwreck. In 2012, Apatow released This Is 40, a follow-up to Knocked Up that sees Pete and Debbie attempting to come to terms with middle age while managing their increasingly turbulent relationship. In one deleted scene, Jason Segel and Chris O'Dowd's characters try their absolute hardest to flirt with a younger woman played by Megan Fox. James Gandolfini has sort of a sexy, violent, kind of dangerous quality about him. It's not just the 40-somethings that come off poorly, though, as Fox's character insists on knowing the guy's star signs to determine how compatible they would be as a couple. Mean Girls arrived at a time when Lindsay Lohan was at the height of her fame, and still very much in demand by Hollywood. The 2004 comedy was directed by Mark Waters and co-written by Tina Fey. Mean Girls largely focuses on the social hierarchy of high schools and how bullying and cliques can dominate life for students, making it challenging to be themselves and express any individuality. Much of the humor comes from the interactions between the students, but there are also some entertaining scenes featuring the youngsters with their parents. Take one deleted scene, for example, which features a brief but hilarious argument between Katie and her parents, featuring a hilarious subtext translation. These are on sale. These are well made. Those are hideous. I don't think those are appropriate. In 2003, director Jon Favreau teamed up with Will Ferrell for Elf, a Christmas comedy that has since become a classic of the holiday season. Ferrell plays Buddy, a human orphan accidentally taken back to the North Pole and adopted by the elves after becoming trapped in Santa's toy sack. 
Feeling increasingly out of place among the elves, an older buddy returns to New York City to search for his biological father. Along the way, he discovers more about himself while also helping to redeem his dad, who transforms from a selfish jerk into a loving father. The early stages of Elf deal with Buddy coming to terms with the fact that he doesn't quite fit in with the Elf kind due to his larger size. One deleted scene shows Buddy participating in a hockey game, in which he overpowers every Elf around him. It's fairly understandable that this one was removed, of course. The movie takes considerable pains elsewhere to demonstrate that Buddy isn't an ordinary Elf. Deadpool stars Ryan Reynolds as a notorious anti-hero who sets out to hunt the evil scientist who tortured him and gave him his unique powers. At the same time, Wade Wilson strives to find the courage to reconnect with his girlfriend, Vanessa. Wade's pining over Vanessa is the subject of this deleted scene, in which Deadpool follows his love interest from a distance but never quite manages to get close enough to reveal himself. It's a seemingly tender moment that shows the softer side of Deadpool. That is, until he's hit by a truck and wakes up in the morgue. Iron Man 3 is not gonna go down as one of the most popular MCU installments, but that certainly doesn't make it a bad movie. Robert Downey Jr. returns to his iconic role as Tony Stark, with the titular hero facing numerous struggles in his personal life that are exacerbated by a wave of attacks led by the mysterious Mandarin. All of this means that Iron Man 3 isn't exactly teeming with jokes, and it doesn't have quite as much space for comedy as some other MCU installments. That may well be why this scene was cut from the film, in which Trevor Slattery performs accents to try and get himself out of a sticky situation with Iron Man and War Machine. Stark is dead. The body's here. Okay, that's good work. You stay on the talent. You don't let him out of your sight. Copy that. That's beyond the talent. The impersonation ultimately works, with alternate endings to the scene adding to the hilarity. Can you do uh, British? Well, I am British. Although Adam Sandler has had mixed results when it comes to his more recent comedy projects, he has very much proved that he has what it takes as a dramatic performer. One of Sandler's earliest serious roles came in Punch Drunk Love, a 2002 film that was not a financial success but brought Sandler widespread acclaim. He portrays Barry Egan, a socially awkward executive who falls in love and finds his dull life suddenly transformed due to a series of unexpected events. The primary antagonist in Punch Drunk Love is Dean Trumbull, the owner of the mattress store that Sandler's character visits. A deleted commercial for the store sees Trumbull advertising his business before jumping off a roof onto some mattresses. However, things don't go as planned. D&D Mattress has queen mattress sets for $99 and king sets for $129. Trainwreck combines the talents of Amy Schumer, Judd Apatow, and Bill Hader for a light-hearted romantic comedy. Schumer starts as a promiscuous, independent writer who has sworn off monogamy her whole life. Yet her feelings start to shift when she meets a sports doctor, played by Hader, who makes her reconsider her whole life philosophy. But that doesn't come easy, though, with the writer finding it difficult to completely change her ways after decades of heavy drinking and late nights. The movie's alternate ending shows Schumer holding a baby before quickly revealing that it isn't hers, but rather her sister's. She then admits she loves being an aunt. The sentimentality of the moment proves to be too much, though, and the character quickly shows that she hasn't fully moved on from her former lifestyle, as she discusses grabbing a drink or four. There should never have been any doubt that planes, trains, and automobiles would go down as a comedy classic. After all, the 1987 film not only stars comic giants Steve Martin and John Candy, but was also written and directed by John Hughes, the man behind The Breakfast Club and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. A Thanksgiving staple in the US, the film follows Neil Page, a tightly wound executive who is trying to get home for the holidays after a freak storm diverts his plane. Along the way, he meets Dale Griffith, and the two soon clash due to their very different personalities. One of the movie's many deleted scenes sees Dale ordering and preparing his food on board a plane, revealing his meticulous methods toward ensuring he gets the best meal possible on every airline. On American. I'll have their uh, kosher plate. A little slice of salami, some roast beef, some turkey, dark rye bread. Very nice. Few actors can make eating food on a plane entertaining, but Candy manages to do just that, throwing some great gags into the mix as well. The New Zealand comedy horror What We Do in the Shadows proved to be so successful that it launched an entire franchise. Jermaine Clement and Taika Waititi jointly took on writing and directing duties for the 2014 release, which charts the lives of several vampires living in the present day in New Zealand's capital city, Wellington. When a new face joins the ranks of the undead, the group faces fresh challenges as they struggle to fully cope with modern life. A cute deleted scene from the movie shows Viago and Deacon discussing the pottery creations they have been working on, albeit with little success. It's like a boat filled with some slugs. Later, the two discuss their romantic lives and the age difference between Viago and his love interest. You know, like, she's like 96 and I'm like 
317, you know? People are gonna talk. Rob Reiner's 1984 mockumentary, This Is Spinal Tap, is a bona fide cult classic. Christopher Guest, Michael McKean, and Harry Shearer star as the three charter members of a fictional British heavy metal band, who are followed by a documentary crew that captures the trials and tribulations of the group. Having popularized the mockumentary genre, This Is Spinal Tap is filled with iconic moments that have since become part of pop culture history. One scene that didn't make it into the final cut and engage in an in-depth discussion about what apes actually eat. It is exactly as bizarre as it sounds, with the group seemingly concluding that apes and monkeys are primarily bread eaters. They're bread eaters mainly. They go for, you know, any kind of bread is and mainly... yet it's str and yet they've developed as a race, they've developed no baking skills. One band member even reveals that some gorillas can talk, although none of them are capable of swearing for some unknown reason. Years later, Michael McKean admitted on X, formerly known as Twitter, that he hadn't actually seen this particular deleted scene from Spinal Tap. An early film in Jim Carrey's career, Dumb and Dumber stands as a comedy classic that helped make the comic actor a household name. The film follows Lloyd Christmas and Harry Dunn as they set out to return a lost suitcase, inadvertently becoming involved in a kidnapping plot involving a dangerous criminal group. Carrey was certainly committed to making sure Lloyd remained as dumb as can be, leading to a lot of hilarious moments in this laugh-a-minute movie. Throughout the film, Lloyd and Harry come into conflict with a trucker called Seabass. Violent and quick to anger, Seabass swears revenge against the pair after they trick him into paying for their food at a diner. They later encounter the truck driver at a gas station, with Seabass telling Lloyd that he plans to attack and kill him. Luckily, Harry interrupts this genuinely harrowing moment to save the day. In many ways, Scary Movie launched an entire genre of spoofs, ranging from subsequent parodies of horror films to the likes of Disaster Movie and Epic Movie, a product of the Wayans brothers with various members of the family directing, writing, and starring in the film, Scary Movie became a franchise that later spawned four sequels. The movie follows a group of teenagers who are hunted by a vicious killer wearing a ghost face mask. The opening scene of Scary Movie closely resembles the early moments of Scream, in which the killer phones a young woman and begins to threaten her. The Scary Movie version is decidedly goofier, however. A short 30-second clip that was removed from the sequel sees a murderer slowly chase down Drew, until it is revealed that she is actually running on a treadmill. Before Andy Samberg became a worldwide star for his leading role in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, the SNL alumni starred in several comedies throughout the late 2000s and early 2010s. In Hot Rod, Samberg takes on the role of an aspiring stuntman named Rod, who is frequently berated and taunted by his stepfather, Frank. When Frank falls ill, Rod plans his biggest stunt ever to raise enough money to pay for his medical care. One of the movie's deleted scenes depicts Rod recreating a famous stunt in his bedroom, using toys and a pool table, before the action takes an extreme turn as a dinosaur attacks his stepfather. The 2018 film Solo – A Star Wars Story follows a young Han Solo as he embarks on a major heist, meets Chewbacca and Lando Calrissian, and acquires the Millennium Falcon. Solo isn't a comedy per se, yet the film still features several funny moments that add some levity to the proceedings. The entire movie may well have been even more lighthearted if one deleted scene had stayed in, which shows Han and Chewbacca having a snowball fight as they traverse a wintry planet. <laughs> Nineteen ninety four was very much the year that Jim Carrey became a worldwide superstar, having taken on lead roles in The Mask, Dumb and Dumber, and of course, Ace Ventura Pet Detective. In this movie, Carrey plays an unconventional animal expert tasked with tracking down the missing mascot of the Miami Dolphins. Previously only available on home releases of the movie, this deleted scene was intended for the early part of the movie when Ace begins to investigate the disappearance of the dolphin known as Snowflake. With reporters asking to get a look at the mascot, Ace pretends to be a German animal trainer to throw off suspicion that Snowflake is missing. Why do you care about the dolphin? Do you know him? Does he call you at home? Do you have a dorsal fin? Long before the MCU hit its stride, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy brought the adventures of Peter Parker to the big screen in a live-action adaptation of the comic book Web Slinger. The sequel, which hit cinema screens in 2004, finds Spider-Man facing Dr. Octopus, as the villain seeks revenge against him after the death of his wife. One of the standout performances in Raimi's trilogy is J.K. Simmons' portrayal of the Daily Bugle's editor-in-chief, J. Jonah Jameson. Harboring a truly intense hatred of Spider-Man, Jameson does everything he can to discredit the young hero. Yet he also provides some of the best moments of comic relief. A great example of that comes in one of the movie's deleted scenes, in which Jameson puts on the Spider-Man costume and pretends to be the superhero in front of his bemused employees. 
There have been many James Bond spoofs over the years, but none have been quite as successful as the Austin Powers franchise. The first installment, Austin Powers International Man of Mystery, arrived in 1997, establishing the formula that was to follow in two further sequels. Mike Myers stars as a eponymous British secret agent and his arch-nemesis Dr. Evil, as they battle through time and struggle to adapt to modern-day sensibilities. A recurring joke in the Austin Powers franchise focuses on henchmen failing to escape from danger, no matter how easy it might be. This began in the first film, with a steamroller flattening a hapless guard despite moving at a snail's pace. A follow-up scene to this sequence, which was removed from most versions of the movie, examines the effects of the guard's death on his family. People never think how things affect the family of a henchman. Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith is the third and final entry in the Star Wars prequel trilogy, depicting Anakin Skywalker's transformation into Darth Vader and the destruction of the Jedi Order. Set during the closing stages of the Clone Wars, the film chronicles the Galactic Republic's continuing war against the Separatists, who are under the secret control of the Sith. It isn't exactly the Star Wars entry in which you'd expect to find many jokes or physical comedy, that's for sure. But it's there. As Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi hunt down General Grievous on his starship, they face numerous obstacles. In one deleted scene, this includes getting lost and needing help from R2-D2. While discussing what they should do, Anakin suddenly begins speaking in droid. I'm pretty sure that beep is down. I sense Count Dooku is above us. Oh yes, 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 you're right. Beep is up. Of course, it's entirely possible that this is unintentionally funny, rather than an outright joke. It certainly wouldn't be the first time that's happened in a Star Wars movie.